What is a probiotic? And what the heck is a prebiotic? Probiotics I've heard of, but prebiotics? When you think of probiotics, you probably think yogurt. Hearing someone say prebiotics might sound like a slip of the tongue, but these substances are actually different from probiotics and play their own part in caring for your health. But what exactly are probiotics and prebiotics, and how should you incorporate them into your nutrition routine? Hi, I'm Heather Brooker, here to answer your most pressing questions from the often confusing world of food. Today, we're talking about everything you need to know about probiotics and prebiotics. This is Food for Thought. Let's start with the somewhat familiar probiotics. These are live bacteria found in certain foods and supplements which help colonize your gut with good bacteria known as gut flora or gut microbiota. This collection of good bacteria helps protect the digestive tract and the body in general from harmful bacteria and fungi. Gut bacteria also produce vitamin K and short chain fatty acids, which are the main source of nutrition to the cells residing in the colon. The bacteria in the gut can even improve the immune system's functions, potentially lessen symptoms of depression, and help combat obesity. That's some pretty powerful stuff. The food you eat can either bolster gut bacteria or cause it some serious harm. Eating a diet high in sugar and fat, for example, can negatively influence the gut bacteria and may lead to insulin resistance and other health conditions. Such good bacteria turned bad is also known to have a relationship with a higher body mass index, or BMI for short. Food can serve as a positive force when it comes to gut bacteria too, right? Yes, absolutely. Many foods naturally contain probiotics, such as yogurt and fermented foods like kimchi, kombucha tea, and some types of unpasteurized pickles and pickled vegetables. Typically, eating these types of foods is enough to see the benefits of healthy gut bacteria. Numerous probiotic supplements are on the market, but they often differ from one another in confusing ways, make claims without any proof they work, and may not be strong enough to make it past your stomach acid all the way to the gut. Some individuals should not take probiotic supplements, such as those with small intestinal bacteria overgrowth or with a sensitivity to the supplement's ingredients. Others, however, can see great benefits from taking the right kind of supplement. Consulting with a healthcare professional who is knowledgeable about probiotics is the best way to go. I bet you're thinking I forgot all about prebiotics. Don't worry. We're going to talk about those bad boys right now. Just like any living thing, probiotic bacteria need to eat. Prebiotics are probiotics food source. They're found in carbs, most often in fiber, which humans can't digest, but gut bacteria can. In fact, gut bacteria needs these nutrients to do its job well. So which foods contain prebiotics? Certain vegetables, fruits, and legumes all contain types of prebiotic fiber, specifically asparagus, garlic, leeks, onions, bananas, berries, beans, peas, and oats are great sources. If you're into efficiency, symbiotic foods like cheese, kefir, and sauerkraut are for you. These foods contain both probiotics and a prebiotic source of fiber for that good bacteria to feed on. Now that you understand what a probiotic is, what a prebiotic is, and how they differ, all you have to do is remember to incorporate plenty of them into your dietary habits. Doing so keeps your gut bacteria balanced, which allows it to reach its full potential in supporting your overall health. Since research in these areas of nutrition is ongoing, make sure to sign up for alerts on foodallergy.org to keep up with the latest. Probiotics and prebiotics are a cinch, and we're here to help. Thank you.